S-A-G-E. We're talking about the passing of the late, great Walter E. Williams. Dr. Thomas Sowell, his best friend of 50 years, wrote this column that was published this morning. Walter Williams loved teaching. Unlike many other teachers today, he made it a point never to impose his opinions on his students. Those who read his syndicated newspaper columns know that he expressed his opinions boldly and unequivocally there, but not in the classroom. Walter once said he hoped that on the day he died, he would have taught a class that day. And that is just the way it was when he died on Wednesday, April 2, 2020. He was my best friend for a half century. There was no one I trusted more or whose integrity I respected more. Since he was younger than me, I chose him to be my literary ex ex executor, executor, to take control of my books after I was gone. But his death is a reminder that no one really has anything to say about such things. As an economist, Walter Williams never got the credit he deserved. His book, Race and Economics, is a must-read introduction to the subject. Amazon has ranked it fifth in sales among civil rights books nine years after it was published. Another book of his, On the Effects of Economics Under the White Supremacist Apartheid Regime in South Africa, was titled South Africa's War Against Capitalism. He went to South Africa to study the situation directly. Many of the things he brought out have implications for racial discrimination in other places around the world. By the way, in that book, he argued that the racists were using the minimum wage to deprive blacks willing to work for less money of jobs. Thomas Sowell continues, I have had many occasions to cite Walter Williams' research in my own books. Most of what others say about higher prices in low-income neighborhoods today has not yet caught up to what Walter said in his doctoral dissertation decades ago. Despite his opposition to the welfare state as something doing more harm than good, Walter was privately very generous with both his money and his time in helping others. He figured he had a right to do whatever he wanted to do with his own money, but that politicians had no right to take away his money to give it away in order to get votes. In a letter dated March 3, 1975, Walter said, Sometimes it is a very lonely struggle to help other people, particularly the ones who do not realize that help is needed. End of quote. In the same letter, he mentioned a certain hospital which has an all but written policy of prohibiting the flunking out of black medical students. Not long after this, a professor at a prestigious medical school revealed that black students were given passing grades without having met the standards applied to other students. He warned that trusting patients would pay, some with their lives, for such irresponsible double standards. That has, in fact, happened. As a person, Walter Williams was unique. I have heard of no one else being described as being like Walter Williams. Holding a black belt in karate, Walter was a tough customer, one night, three men jumped him, and two of those men ended up in the hospital. The other side of Walter came out in relation to his wife, Connie. She helped put him through graduate school, and after receiving his Ph.D., she never had to work again, not even to fix his breakfast. Walter liked to go to his job at 4.30 a.m. He was the only person who had no problem finding a parking space on a street in downtown Washington. Around 9 o'clock or so, Connie, now awake, would phone Walter, and they would greet each other tenderly for the day. We may not see his like again, and that is our loss, end of quote. I met a gentleman maybe 20 years ago uh, at a firm, uh, at a um, radio, uh, uh, what we call remotes, where we're at a different location, and we, we do the show from there. And this guy had written me a few times, and I liked his letter, and he walked up to me and introduced me and told me he's the one who'd been writing. And... I gave him my private email address and said, whenever you have anything you want to say, you can write me privately because often I can't get it because I get so much email on my other sources. I can't sort it through, but, but this is my personal email address. If you want to say something to me, send it to me. Now, I'm telling you this because he wrote me this morning, and you heard the part about Tom Sowell saying Walter Williams was generous with his time and his money. Here's what this letter said. It's from my friend Bernard. Larry, I am so sad to hear about Walter. He would always take the time and write me back if I asked him a question. So glad he was in your movie. Signed, Bernard. So, 
I didn't know Bernard even knew Walter Williams, let alone that he could write to Walter Williams, because Walter is very uh, guarded about his private email address. But he gave this man clearly his email address, and when Bernard would write him, he would write back. Now, how many years have I been telling you about Relief Factor? What, five, seven years? You know, there might be 100 million folks struggling with some kind of pain. That is why Pete and Seth Talbot, the father-son owners of Relief Factor, created what they've called the three-week quick start and then discounted it to only $19.95. That's less than a dollar a day to see if we can get you out of pain. Four ingredients, all of which are 100% drug-free, and they attack pain from a different metabolic pathway. So try it. ReliefFactor.com, ReliefFactor.com, or call 800-500-8384, 800-500-8384.